Welcome to our world channel. Derrida's deconstruction between the multiplication of difference and the criticism of centralization. Today, it is not surprising that French theory remains the most important theoretical reference for cultural studies, cultural criticism, and postmodern theories in general. No one denies the role of this theory in supporting knowledge trends, establishing a new discourse based on difference and pluralism and crystallizing awareness of the value of cultural systems in understanding and creating disruption. Radical in the history of human thought. The importance of these theories lies mainly in the revelations of their pioneers, especially the theorists of the postmodern period. Many critics were influenced by the proposals of French theory, which enabled them to carry out deep investigations into the core of knowledge, and to establish a new perspective in dealing with texts as a cultural event that engages with discourses, institutions, and cultural patterns, in an effort to uncover implicit systems, and study them in their various and multiple contexts, as well as the contributions of sociologist Pierre Bourdieu in establishing the theory of fields, and the concept of symbolic violence practiced by official cultural institutions. Thus, then, we discover that we are facing important and multiple references in dealing with literary and non-literary discourses from angles other than aesthetic and rhetorical, but rather culturally systematic contextual. Deconstruction is one of the most prominent features of this theory, as France is its first incubator. But studies indicate that it flourished more in America when Jacques Derrida delivered a series of lectures at Johns Hopkins University in 1966. And these lectures were the spark that ignited the fires of critical debate in the Western monetary arena. Derrida's deconstruction was a statement, promising, the emergence of a critical movement that took the dissection strategy as a methodological support for loosening the categories of the structure and closure of the text, and examining the depths and absent relationships within the fabric of each text. From this perspective, it seems that deconstruction is an incentive for reading that avoids destabilizing the metaphysical certainties of cosmic civilization, by questioning the closed and immutable entity of discourses. It benefited a lot from German philosophy, especially from Nietzsche, Heidegger, and Husserl, although some revelations indicate that the actual beginning of deconstruction was with Roland Barthes. But it is also proven that Barthes was always traveling between the banks of literary curricula, even if his classification in the category of structural critics seemed permissible and reasonable. Deconstruction is Derrida's method of reading and analyzing texts when he proceeds from dismantling the text to show it as a complex mixture of other texts. Derrida believes that his deconstructive method is able at the same time to discover the way in which the text could be composed in the first place. Therefore, Derrida's writings in general and his deconstruction of the works of other authors, in particular, are characterized by difficulty that is easy to detect on the first page of his studies. He himself did not find a clear concept or definition of his dismantling. The purpose of the emergence of deconstruction was to multiply the principle of difference between signifiers and signifieds. A literary text cannot have a single meaning, or a limited and clear one, because it is subject to a kind of deconstruction rather than assemblage, contradiction rather than compatibility. The idea of a fixed structure, and placing it in brackets, that is, inferring the nature of this epistemological contradiction between the text and the abuses that can occur in reading. And in this way he criticizes the idea of structure in anthropology at Claude Levi Strauss, and describes the structural paper as the last moment in a succession of structures philosophical. And since it is the last, it works satisfied to reduce itself and neutralize it by returning its structure to a specific point, from the points of presence, or to a fixed origin, or to a center. It is based on the logic of paradox or the logic of embarrassment. It rejects the legacy of Eurocentrism, but it accepts Jewish Kabbalistic thought with its mythological backgrounds. It rejects creativity and at the same time calls for it. It views the text as a diaspora and rejects the institution, including the institution of the literary genre. 
but it theorizes and establishes it. What concerns us is this demolition practiced by deconstruction of the concept of centralization and exposing the systems that make up the discourses and extracting the rules that control their production and generation. Derrida's deconstruction played an important role in dissecting and undermining texts. Although it has always been associated with auras of ambiguity and nihilism, as a result of its receding into a narrow and negative epistemological circle. It was not well received by scholars and critics, nor was it widely spread in its native country, France. Compared to other critical approaches, and this is due to its evasiveness and deception, as well as its backgrounds and theories that undermine the work of institutions, and re-read everything that man has produced in different and different ways. And this is what enables us to consider it a tendency, and not a theory that has precise and specific rules and foundations. In general, these are the most important theoretical and procedural foundations of the Dravidian deconstructive thought. First, bypassing the consistency and harmony of the text, by penetrating into the veiled structures, and liberating it from the crucible of the closed structure. Especially since reading the text, any text, should not be done in a crude, superficial, simplistic manner, but rather work to break it down into small entities. By focusing on the strategy of deconstruction, and an attempt to discover its deep orbits and functions, and Derrida emphasized this by saying, there is no homogeneous text, there is in every text. Even in the most traditional metaphysical texts, working forces that are at the same time powers of dismantling the text. There is always the possibility to find in the studied text itself what helps to question it, and make it disintegrate by itself, and this means that Derrida does not intend to go outside the text, but rather prefers to retreat inside, practicing various types of demolition, highlighting his contradictions and illusions hidden behind the veil of structure. Second, criticizing the logos or mental concentration, by undermining the text, and exposing its underlying ideological game within it, especially those dominances inherited from metaphysics, until they became the core of human thinking, a way to reach the breach and dismantle the veils of Western thinking. Saying that the centrality of the mind is a saying that produces horizontally and vertically one meaning, one text, which ultimately leads to deficiencies in understanding the world, the surroundings, and things. Criticizing Heidegger's philosophy, Derrida says, in many aspects of his work, I found him still imprisoned in the metaphysical vision. There he first has a continuation of the logos or mind centralization. In general, when he criticizes Heidegger for being higher than the Germanic race, he is, at the same time, criticizing Eurocentrism, the master-slave dualism that pervaded the history of philosophy. For there is no myth of origin, no difference between white and black, and no superiority for the Germanic race over other races. Every hegemony is an undermining of the oppressed peoples, and a practice that will write the one history, with one voice, audible. And deconstruction seeks to write history with multiple voices and throats, and accordingly, Derrida's readings of the different texts and his texts that he put together constitute. As John Strick says, an exploration of the centrality of the Western word and its metaphysics the presence that these texts can say confirms and destabilizes at the same time. Third, criticism of entrapment and permanent residence within the text, because literature is subject to ready-made sayings and perceptions, a monolithic function that excludes otherness difference and pluralism, and mortgages the literary text to a predetermined system although many literary texts appear to be loose and difficult to capture. This means that Derrida considers the literary text just endless traces of signs and signifiers, in other words. The text is a set of obliterated metaphors in the words of the Italian critic Umberto Eco, and Derrida here continues his criticism of the formal structuralism that sees the text as a closed entity. Possessing one or several meanings, and this Dridian strategy in reading and interpretation it involves a destructive ability for the text, penetrating into the abyssal depths. 
and moving from the search for the truth and the only constant meaning to the search for the possible and the possible and for the multiple meanings. Derrida's thought is based on criticism. Criticism of the institution, criticism of language, and criticism of formal structural criticism. Stability, centrality, and the dominant difference, undermining, and pluralism. And what is remarkable about these Dridian approaches to texts, is that they emerge cognitively from within structuralism, or writing over rubble in the Heideggerian concept. Thanks for watching. And see you in a new video.